Hey everybody, I'm Aaron Simmons. This is Philosophy for Where We Find Ourselves. Today we're going to talk about innovation and how maybe a good game of badminton can teach us some things that we need to remember as we try to engage in innovative practices. Now, I don't know about you, but everywhere these days, I see celebrations of innovation. In fact, my own university just announced some big directives, a vision statement. And the first point, the first priority is that they want to create a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship. Now, let me be clear. I think that's great. But how is it that we think about innovation and, in some senses, entrepreneurship if we don't have a sense of the criterion by which we are going to be innovative? Innovate toward what? Start businesses. Why? Is there something good just about novelty? Is there something powerful just about doing something new? Well, it's in thinking about these questions as a philosopher that I think we can find some pretty good inspiration from badminton. Behind me, you'll see my family's badminton net. It just got set up this week. So of course, we've been playing it every single night. My son convinced me that we should also do a little bit of volleyball. So I went and bought one and proceeded quickly to try to show him how to do a big flying, jumping spike serve. And of course, threw out my shoulder. <laughs> I went to the doctor this morning to get it checked out. As my brother said, we're over 45, which means we should not get out of chairs too quickly. Anyway, badminton is one of these things like volleyball, like ping pong, like tennis, like pickleball. You basically stretch a string and then hit something back and forth above it. Sure, there are different rules and different ways to make the game more or less compelling. And sure, we can innovate relative to the game itself. How can we make the rackets more effective? How can we make the birdies last longer? How can we make the net be more stable? There's all kinds of those questions about innovation. But notice, it's innovating relative to a really simple and basic commitment that doesn't change. Here's this idea, hit something over a string. How then can we make that idea as much fun as possible? When it comes to innovation, I think that philosophy really does need to speak up more. In other words, I think that people who talk about innovation should listen to philosophy as a resource for thinking about how to innovate well. Because what philosophy does at its most basic is it says, what do we take for granted and are those things worth continuing to assume? Should we affirm the world differently in light of different arguments or different evidence that we may have overlooked? When it comes to innovation, that skill is really important. Innovate relative to what? Why are we trying to do something different? My goodness, if I take a hammer, I can innovate and try to drive the nail in by flipping the hammer over, but it's not gonna work real well. So we've got to think carefully about what then is the criterion or the direction towards which we are striving such that we could judge innovation as not simply new or different, but better. Now, it's also important to understand that when we start talking about notions of progress or improvement, it can be tempting to think that these are somehow objective but they're rarely objective. They are almost always nested in some particular community's set of commitments. What is it we hope to do? Why? Who are we hoping to become? When we become reflective about who we are, where we're going, and why it matters, then innovation can be considered as an important aspect of that because we identify some aspect of who we are as needing improvement. We innovate in relationship to a perceived need precisely because we recognize that there might be better ways to do things. That notion of finding different ways forward is what philosophy is all about. 
But importantly, philosophy does not say, let's find a different way forward just because it's different. Rousseau, in fact, said at one point, he may not be better than anybody else, but at least he's different. That conception of innovation, I think, is actually dangerous. When we're just trying to be different in order to be different. Rarely is that something then that can recommend itself to others because it doesn't have a sense of what makes difference itself something worthwhile. When we are concerned about arguments, concerned about foundations, whether or not we think that they are stable and objective, they're still where we start from in order to try to go somewhere, right? Foundations and directions. Both are risky, but like badminton, it's the basic game that matters. All the other stuff becomes relevant only if we keep that game in clear sight, in clear focus. So as you innovate today, as you think about different ways of doing things, don't hear this as a, you know, raining on your parade. Let's innovate. Let's start new things. Let's find different ways to go forward. But let's remind each other that what matters is we have a good sense of why. And that why is always contingent, reflective, and it's revisable. We could even do differently the why that we think spurns our innovation forward. I take that to be pretty good news. Philosophy matters because we are not static beings. Sure, we can stabilize ourselves and our surroundings, and there's some good to that. But don't ever think that stabilization means absolute permanence. Let's think together, encourage each other to ask the hard questions like, innovation for what? What are we trying to do different? Why does it matter? And in doing that, maybe we can become truly innovative about drawing on philosophy for all kinds of different ends. All right, get out, play some badminton, innovate where you find problems that need addressed, but don't just run headlong into the new because someone told you new is better. I'll see you next time, unless a piano falls on our heads. <laughs>